This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by the North Law Firm. For car accidents and negligent security cases, call Joe at 239-337-1191. By Crime Stoppers of Southwest Florida. Report crimes and get paid with nobody knowing your identity. 1-800-700-TIPS. And by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, welcome to another edition of Lee Pitts Live. I'm so thrilled that you put us on your list of things to do this morning. I think you're going to be happy that you did as well. We have a fabulous guest lineup. Where are we? We're at the school district of Lee County. We appreciate their accommodations here for four weeks. Got a great lineup. We're going to get a chance. Trish is back. I know you guys are, can't wait to hear from Trish Route, the Crime Stoppers coordinator of Southwest Florida. We also got back in the studio again after a long hiatus. Get a chance to talk to Bishop Rick Neal of Trinity Community Church of Naples. He's back here. And we'll get a chance finally to get him in, on, on the air in studio. We talked to Courtney Williams, the HR and marketing person for Serenity at Home Companion Care. All that's on Lee Pitts Live. We'll be right back. Southwest Florida, welcome back. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome to the show Trish Rout of Crime Stoppers. Good morning. Good to, good to get you here. I know you're a busy lady. I see you on television all the time. For, thanks for taking the time out to grace our TV set. Always. The, um, when, when people think of Crime Stoppers of Southwest Florida, what do you hope come to their mind? That we are the safe place that they can reach out to on information on unsolved crimes, wanted fugitives, and that when they call us, that they know for sure that they're going to be 100% anonymous from beginning to end. You know, anytime there's a crime, we get it. Some, you know, when, when people don't want to necessarily talk to police on the scene, we get that. There's, you know, certain beliefs in the community about snitches. I don't like that word, but it's what it is, what it is. So when people reach out to Crime Stoppers, they can do it in the privacy of their own home. We've got a mobile app they can use. They can go on their computers and submit a tip online. But when they provide that information to us, we don't have any way of telling who they are. We don't have caller ID, call tracing, none of that uh, technology to, to be able to figure out who they are. And we never, ever ask any questions as to, you know, what your name is, whether you're male or female, what your relationship to the, the suspect is. We just want the information they have. We immediately take that information, put it in the hands of law enforcement, and more times than not, they're, be, they're able to take that information and make an arrest. And uh, they can get paid. And they're going to get paid. Uh, we just a few months back, we upped our uh, maximum reward to three thousand. It wasn't one thousand for a while, so now the maximum reward is it's up to three thousand. Three thousand would obviously be like for a homicide, but we take tips on homicides and everything in between: graffiti, um, weapons in the schools, drugs in the schools, suspicious activity, hit and runs. That's a especially this time of year, hit and runs is a, a huge problem. And you were telling me in past interviews that when people and I like talking about the money one more time is that even access to get their money is confidential. Explain that process. When you provide a tip to Crime Stoppers, you're given a code number. It's just a series of five or six numbers. That is the only way that we identify people from beginning to end. So if, if the tip pans out to an arrest and a cash reward is due, they tell us which branch of a, of a particular bank they want to go to. They go into the bank, they just say tip one, two, three, four, five, whatever their code number is. They get cash, there's no checks or anything like that. Cash money, walk out of the bank. Nobody ever asked for it for their name, their number, or the reason that they provided a tip. The whole, all of this money that goes into making Crime Stoppers what it is today is successful here in Southwest Florida. That money comes from a unique place, not from the taxpayers, does it? Absolutely. It comes from bad guys. So what a great concept. We're using bad guys' money to put more bad guys behind bars. So when they're, uh, when they're convicted of a crime, they have to pay a many different fees. One of the fees they, ha they have to pay is a $20 assessment that goes to the state. We get about $16 of that back in the form of a grant that we apply for every year. So then we use those trust fund dollars to pay out the rewards. So we're using the bad guys money, put more bad guys behind bars, not a dime of taxpayer dollars is used for this program. Now we have some contact information flashing on the screen, your website and a phone number. And, but uh, you also, that's a way to access Crime Stoppers. When they get to that website, they'll see all the social media ways to connect with you as well. I think you're really big on now 
the, the using your phone and social media to do things, right? Yeah, you know, social media has been a great friend of ours. You know, whenever we get a good surveillance picture, somebody that say they, they went to a store and they, they stole $1,000 worth of items, if that store has got good surveillance and we can take a photo and put that out on Facebook or, or Twitter, nine times out of 10, we're getting a call saying, hey, this is exactly who this guy is, which helps law enforcement be because we're able to make a quick arrest in that case and then obviously pay out that tipster. So oh. social media is, is, has been a, a real key for us. But you were talking about that mobile app. I would say more than half of our tips now um, come in through that mobile app. It used to be everything was on the hotline, the 1-800-780-TIPS. But now that mobile app, the P3TIPS app, it's so easy. We all have our phones, and if somebody is on the scene, a crime just happened, they can go on their phone. People are on their, on their phone all the time, so it's going to be nothing suspicious. They can provide that tip. They can upload video or photos right there from the crime scene, and it's immediately hitting our inbox. And then they, they are logged in as a potential person for the money down the road or being that? Because that, 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 um, the P3 Tips app will also generate that code number. Okay. So, the, again, that, that code number is going to be identifiable only to that tipster, and that is how we recognize them from beginning to end. That's how we make sure they get their cash. We don't deal with checks or anything like that. Everything is cash. Let me go back to something you said earlier, which I thought was really interesting. Like, we, are, we, we see from time to time these surveillance cameras uh, showing people on television all the time. So if you see a person on TV or on social media being identified as a crime criminal and you didn't see the crime but you know this person mm -hmm. you call in you still can tap into all of the benefits of the money and everything absolutely because we don't ask people why they're calling you know like hey that was my my brother-in-law or my ex you know it, that that video is golden because most of the people committing crimes in our community live in our community. They live here, they could be our neighbors, maybe we go to the same grocery store that they do or the same restaurants. So you don't have to know somebody personally to be able to say, hey, this, is, this guy is a suspect in this crime. You just have to, we'll, we'll take any information we can get. Places where these uh, criminals may be just frequenting, where they, um, you know, a doctor's office that they go to, any kind of identifiable information that our detectives can, can go out into the community, track these guys down, and females, we have a lot of female offenders too. Um, track them down, arrest them, and then pay out that cash reward. Excellent. Now, the, um, when I, I've watched Crime Stoppers on television all these years, and, but, you know, in recent times, I got a chance to actually talk to the coordinator here. And you on the show uh, some months ago, or what have we, and you gave some statistics that showed Crime Stoppers is really working. Talk about the stats on how many people have been arrested as a result of the public helping out. Well, it, it, during the course of any given year, you're talking in excess of 1,500 arrests that are made. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we gave out about $150,000 in cash rewards. That's a lot of money that we're putting right back into the community, and it's all for people just doing the right thing. We were talking about surveillance pictures and video. Almost, I would say 90% of the time we put out a good photo, we're going to get an arrest. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to, you may not always hear about a Crime Stoppers arrest because if it's a high profile case, say it's a homicide, and there's only a certain number of people that would have access to information that would lead to the arrest, you may never hear that it was a Crime Stoppers tip that led to that arrest because we want to do everything we can to protect that tipster. So if it's a sensitive case where only a small pool of people are going to have that information, you're probably never going to hear it. But people need to know that behind the scenes, these tips are making a difference. We're getting robbers, murderers, thieves, um, child molesters off of our streets because people are doing the right thing and reaching out to us. If you are connecting with Crime Stoppers, you need to dial the number that's on the screen and those other apps that you mentioned, the website. 911 is not connecting you to Crime Stoppers. They are not. When you call 911, whether you know it or not, you are a known factor. They know exactly who you are. With Crime Stoppers, when you reach out to us in whatever way you feel comfortable, we have absolutely zero way of finding out who you are. So I could go into court on any given day, put my hand on a Bible and say, I do not know who my tipsters are. And that's for their own protection. We do not want to, to make them part of the process. And that's part of the appeal, we hope, in reaching out to us. Because when you provide that tip, you're no longer, you're not a witness. You don't have to go to court. You don't have to testify and all the paperwork and all oh, the things. Oh, you don't have to go to court either? You don't have to do anything. Now, if you're a witness and you call 911, you're going to be called, you're going to be subpoenaed for court. 
But if you reach out to us, we have no way of knowing who you are. So you're not going to be subpoenaed. You're not going to have to go give a deposition. Your involvement ends when you give that tip. But your involvement, once you got involved with it, it moved the process along and allowed the, 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 the law enforcement to build a case to get this, this, the bad guys put away still. Yep, a tip is just that, it's a tip. It's something that to give law enforcement I to say, it. hey, put this guy on your radar. Then law enforcement goes out, they do what they do best, they find the bad guy, they get the proof they need, and to jail you go. And ever since I first started getting involved with Crime Stoppers a couple of years ago, and I know I first met you maybe 15, 10 years ago, I, I'm actually looking for something going on so I can tip. I'm, I'm a snit. No, I'm using the word <laughs> snit. But I'm, word. I know we can't use that <laughs> word, but I think that we as citizens, we need to be involved in making our community safe. I saw a guy sleeping in, uh, out there in my uh, condo development one time, and uh, I told on him and everything. I saw the cops come. I called Crime Stoppers, and, 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 and uh, we found out that he was a criminal and everything. And, and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> you know, and, and we tell people all the time, suspicious activity. If something doesn't sit right with you, something just feels wrong or it seems off, maybe you've got a neighbor down the street, there's a lot of traffic coming in and out, they're staying for maybe three or four minutes, and then they're leaving, they're coming at two in the morning, mm -hmm. call, because that could very well be a drug house. So you never know um, when that small piece of information that you have may lead to something big. All right. Well, thanks for coming out again and keeping us informed. Absolutely. All right, look forward to getting you back in the future. Thanks, Lee. Let me bump you out. It's Trish Rapp, Crime Stoppers. We'll be right back when we get a chance to talk to a pastor who's a bishop in Naples who's on the run, on the rise. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching Lee Pitts Live. Of course, I'm Lee Pitts, the host of Lee Pitts Live. We're here at the Holiday Inn Airport in Fort Myers, and I want you to continue to watch Lee Pitts Live on television, on YouTube, and, of course, listen to us on radio. But to get all of your shows to come right to you, just click on that subscribe button right there, and Lee Pitts Live will come right to you, your time, your way. That's Lee Pitts Live.